Justice for Shaquille Justice Roberts. For Shaquille Justice, Roberts. Justice, Roberts. Justice for Shaquille 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 Roberts. New civil rights leaders have joined in on the fight for justice for Shanquilla Robinson as a new plan of action for the next 50 days emerges. The family's attorneys, Ben Crump and Sue Ann Robinson, are making moves to increase the profile of this case. It kicked off with the March 3rd press conference in Washington, then the March 13th letter to the president and secretary of state demanding diplomatic intervention. And then on March 15th, just two days following the letter, April Ryan, White House correspondent for the Green asked the White House press secretary, Karine Jean-Pierre, what's next? What is the White House willing to do in regards to Shanquella Robinson's death? A letter to the White House about this case. This young woman was killed in Mexico in October of last year. The suspect is in this country, along with those back here, along with those who were present during the, group, the, the deadly beating, okay? He sent the letter asking for extradition of the suspect to Mexico for the Mexican authorities to deal with, or if not, take jurisdiction of it here and deal with it. What's next? What's the White House willing to do? So let me just first say our hearts go out to uh, Ms. Robinson's family um, and friends. It is devastating what occurred, uh, and certainly um, uh, the, the tragedy is just devastating. And we've been following the news here. Uh, but because um, because there's an FBI un investigation underway, there's very little that we can say. Uh, we got to, as you know, we are very careful about um, criminal investigations or any uh, investigations that are, are currently happening uh, through DOJ in this particular case, FBI. But our hearts go out uh, to, um, again, to the families. And I would have to refer you to the DOJ and the State Department on this. The power of April Ryan's question goes beyond asked and answered. I'm sure we can all agree that the answer from the White House press secretary lacked luster, but by April merely asking the questions, she spread the knowledge of Shanquella's case to a wider audience of people who likely knew nothing about it. Prior to March 3rd, we were all wondering what's happening as the number of people talking about Shanquella had declined. You can see hear that the topic of Shanquella was becoming old news and even worse, cold news. Attorney Ben Crump and his team, like them or not, have injected new life into the case and they've got big plans for the next 50 days. We're going to get into it, but first be sure to click the like button, subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell so you don't miss out on updates to this story, trending topics and so much more. Now let's get into it. 150 days and we still don't have a single arrest. That's the goal. Let's not forget it. The level of disrespect to Shanquella Robinson is extraordinary. The same FBI that we witnessed react with immediacy in the March 6 Matamoros kidnapping of the four Americans waited weeks to open an investigation into Shanquella's death in Mexico. Why? And just like the March 6 kidnapping, there is video evidence proof showing what happened to Shanquella. Along with that is an autopsy report to back it up. According to attorney Ben Crump, clearing this case from the books should be an easy one for the FBI. He says that there's no need for months upon months of investigation when you have this kind of evidence. What are they working so hard to figure out? He said about the State Department. During the March 3rd press conference, attorneys Ben Crump and Sue Ann Robinson demanded from the president and the State Department the kind of diplomatic intervention that, ironically, we would watch unfold just three days later in the Matamoros kidnapping case. In that case, we saw swift and decisive action. According to Tamika Mallory, if the FBI has shown us anything, they have shown us it is possible. Forget about her being a black woman. She is a woman and she is a United Come States on. citizen. And we know what you can do. Say that. We know what you can do. Say that. Let me tell you why we know what you Come can on. do. Because we seen you do it before. That's right. When Natalie Holloway went missing oh, in Aruba, on, America stopped and stood still. Even I stood still. Come on. We shared the information. At the, at the, when, the, when the White House had press conferences, they were asked questions about her. 
The media would not let it die. Come on now. Natalie Holloway was in our homes every day, and she should have been. Well, and so should Chanquilla Robinson. Say that. And so should Chanquilla Robinson. Right. The world saw in the Matamoros case what Chanquilla's family has repeatedly requested be done for her for the past 150 days. Swift, decisive action. And even as late as March 25th, 19 days following the Matamoros kidnapping, Chanquela's family can be seen standing on street corners, begging for action and a response. Something more substantive than the canned no comment due to an ongoing investigation statement that they have gotten on a never ending loop. After five months, this is no longer a valid response. This family is owed more than that empty, rehearsed response. They have been waiting, trusting the U.S. government would come through for them. And even today, that empty response prevails. Five months later, at this point, that response only serves to re-victimize the family. The communication policy when it comes to cases like these needs to be revisited. It's unconscionable to keep this family and any family in the dark going into six months now. The family has been so desperate for answers, they had to pay attorney Sue Ann Robinson, a mother herself, to go in search of them in Mexico at the risk of her own life when the answers from a five-month-long investigation should have been readily available to her right here in her own country where a full investigation is being conducted. Where are the results from the American investigation? In fiscal year 2022 alone, the United States government expelled 72,177 people from this country. When I say expelled, I mean they were physically removed from U.S. soil and sent to other countries. That's nearly 200 people a day. And this number, when compared to prior years, is one of the lowest. So what are you saying, Sleuthy? I'm saying that the process of removing people from the United States and sending them over to other countries is not unusual or special. It's an everyday task, a process that is well-oiled. Why were they expelled? Because of an offense of some kind. They were removed from this country for something that the U.S. doesn't tolerate. And if the offense is a felony, then the process of removing them is swift and immediate. That process is called deportation. Now, you might immediately think deportation is different from extradition. And you're right. Yes, they are different. There are different reasons for why someone might be removed by the process of deportation and other reasons why someone is removed by the process of extradition. But my point here is the end result is the same. If the offense is an aggravated felony like murder, then deportation is swift. Now, wouldn't it be logical to think that extradition would be equally swift for the same reason? Murder? especially when there is video evidence showing the crime? Apparently not. So here's how I interpret this. If an alien or a non-naturalized immigrant commits a murder here in the U.S., deportation is practically imminent and immediate because the person is a danger to our society, right? But if a U.S. citizen commits murder somewhere else, then runs back to the United States for safe harbor, are they not a danger to our society? You tell Tell me who is more dangerous, the alien murderer or the citizen murderer? They're both murderers. Is one any less a threat to American citizens than the other? All things equal, same crime. No. Therefore, the same level of escalation should apply. One or all of the Cabo Six committed an aggravated felony against a U.S. citizen and then came back to the U.S. for safe harbor. And they have been enjoying it in their own beds for the past five months while Shinquella's family watches and begs for something to be done. That's torturous and unsound. If nothing else, the perpetrators should have been detained while the investigation was underway. There is a Mexican arrest warrant, right? At minimum, a provisional arrest should have been carried out, right? 
Let's take a look at what it says about a provisional arrest. Here it says a provisional arrest is an interim arrest of a fugitive. It's one that is done before the state submits a formal request for extradition. That sounds perfect, doesn't it? You tell me, at least our streets would be a little bit safer and Shinquella's family would feel like something was being done on behalf of their loved one. I think it's safe to say that anyone who cares about justice for Shanquella wants the Cabo Six off of our streets. So why aren't they expelled yet? When the evidence is so apparent, if asked, Stevie Wonder could tell you what happened in the video. Despite having to do things the hard way for Shanquella, the movement is growing. New civil rights activists are joining in on the fight and the family's legal team has laid out a concrete plan for the next 50 days. In a recent press conference at Livingston College, a historically Black college in Salisbury, North Carolina, attorney Ben Crump introduced new faces who have united in the fight for justice for Shinquella, and he set forth a plan leading up to the 200th day since Shinquella's murder. Among the new faces in the movement are Bakari Sellers, a prominent national civil rights attorney and CNN political commentator and analyst. Attorney Dominique Calhoun, he is president-elect of the National Bar Association, the largest association of lawyers and judges in America and abroad. Attorney Don Blagrove, she's the executive director of Emancipate North Carolina, a civil rights organization. Reverend Greg Drumwright, who is the executive director and president of Justice for the Next Generation. Scott Esdile, he's the national chair for criminal justice reform for the NAACP. All of these leaders promise to leverage their White House connections to help move the case forward. So things are finally heating up in a much needed way. Attorney Ben Crump also set a milestone date of 200 days of impunity. If the 200 days of impunity, meaning no action from the U.S. occurs, attorneys Crump and Robinson have set in motion a plan for escalation. One thing attorney Ben Crump mentions is that he is expecting an in-person or virtual meeting involving his legal team and White House officials. And he's expected to meet separately with members from the Senate, namely Senator Menendez of the Foreign Relations Committee. This meeting is to take place sometime after April 1st. They are expecting to get answers regarding what is going on during that meeting. In the interim, the letter writing campaign continues. He says it will continue leading up to the 200th day of impunity, which falls on or about May 17th, 2023. Only this time, the letters are expected to come from nationally recognized organizations and the letters are going to be directed to the United States government. Letters will be coming from the National Bar Association and other civil rights organizations. Attorney Ben Crump also mentioned that all of the national fraternities and sororities will be writing letters as well. I'm assuming he's referencing the Divine Nine and you can see them here. This campaign is underway and will continue leading up to the 200th day mark. All the letters will echo the ask for the U.S. government to diplomatically intervene in this case. The ask is simple, either extradite the persons responsible or take up concurrent jurisdiction and adjudicate the case here in the U.S. In the event we reach the 200th day of impunity without any action, until freedom, a social justice organization headed by Tamika Mallory and her co-founders, my son Lennon, Angelo Pinto, and Linda Sarsour, are planning a large march on Washington in the name of justice for Shinquella. In addition to the march, attorney Ben Crump says he will enlist the help of college campuses for more letter and email writing with the goal of flooding the mail and email boxes of the State Department and those in power. Attorney Don Blagrove said it best, and I agree. This is an indictment on those with power in America. Shout out to all my sources, CBS News, News One, HG.org, Livingston College, WBTV, Justice for Shinquala.